set up the counter timer tag for counter mode, just hold down the mode button for three seconds and wait for it to flip into the parameter setup mode. Here we can set up the function. We have a timer function, counter function, attack function, and a mixed mode function. We want the counter function. To lock that in, just press the mode button. Each press of the blue mode button will cycle through all of the counter parameters shown in this chart from the user manual. The up down arrows will cycle through the various settings for each parameter. Let's take a quick look at these. We'll press the mode button to cycle down to the counter function where we can pick one of five types of counters. Two stage counting has two unique setting values. Output one reacts to setting value one and output two reacts to setting value two. Batch counting is good for counting how many groups or batches of objects you have. And total counting maintains a running total of all objects counted. And dual mode uses both inputs to change the present value. You can use both inputs to increment the present value or use one to decrement it. For example, this is great in the case where one input counts the objects, but another is needed to decrement the count when an object is rejected after they've been counted. We're going to use the simple single stage counter in our example, so we'll select that and press the mode button to lock it in. And then we'll press the mode button one more time to go down to the input mode selection. There's a regular up counter, a down counter, this UDA is an up counter on command. It counts up, but when input two is set, it counts down. The UDB counter uses input one to count up and input two to count down. And the UDC counter, that's a quadrature counter. It counts depending on the relationship of the two inputs. We want the up counter mode for this example, so we'll go back to that and lock it in by pressing the mode key. And then the mode key again to take us down to the output mode. There are 11 possible output modes. This number can change depending upon which counter mode you select. We only get eight possible output modes when using this one stage counter. There's a chart that shows you exactly how each output mode works in the manual. Just scroll through them till you see the one that matches your application. We're gonna use mode C for our example here. So we'll press the mode key to lock that in and then the mode key to advance us to the next parameter. This is the counter speed or the sample rate. This is how fast the counter checks the input to see if there have been any changes. You can select from 10K all the way down to one cycle per second. We currently have 5K selected, so we'll advance to the next parameter. Now we go directly to the output two pulse width. We skipped over the output one because both outputs toggle at the same time in this stage one counter. You only need one pulse width setting. So this counter happens to use the output pulse two to specify the width for both. You can pick any width you want. We'll just increment this to, uh, oh, let's say 10. We press the mode key to lock that in, and then the mode key to advance us down to the next parameter. Let's scroll our chart up so we can see the rest of the parameters. Press the mode button to move down to the next parameter, which is the position of the decimal point, or how many significant digits do you want to show? Let's press the mode to get down to the next parameter, which is the scaling parameter. You can scale the display with this parameter. Maybe you know you get 200 pulses per 90 degrees of rotation. You could modify the display by using the scaling factor of 90 over 200 or 0.45 here so the display shows the user degrees instead of the raw pulse count. That's a really handy feature. We'll leave that one alone for now. Press the mode key to advance to the next parameter. Here you can choose whether you want the present value to be saved on a power loss or have it cleared. We'll leave it in the clear setting. You can set the minimum width of the reset pulse. You may want to use the 20 millisecond value if you suspect you have a noisy signal line or want to filter out some switch bounces, for example. And finally, what kind of input are you connected to, PNP or MPN? It's important to set this right, otherwise you may get some unexpected results. When you're done setting all your parameters, just hold down the mode key for three seconds, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, and you're right back in the operation mode where you can set your set point to any value you want and start counting objects. Well, that's all there is to setting up the counter. Be sure to check out the other videos in this series to get the most out of your counter timer tech module. And as always, please send us any topics you would like to see covered, or any other comments for that matter. We appreciate the feedback.